Okay, this one is a flip. You got classic paint uh, everywhere, painted cabinets, new floors, new wall paint, uh, basic appliance upgrade. So that's gonna be pretty common if one of these quick turnaround 2001 uh, property flips. So what we're gonna focus on today, which you should always be focusing on whenever you're buying a property like this, is the major components of the structure. Don't focus on the floors and the walls. Most people can replace that at a decent price. What's the most expensive items on the property is something such as the roof or your HVAC system cost just as much to paint the whole property and replace the appliance. So let's uh, focus on the major components of this property and see what we're finding. Okay, I know as a homeowner, you're not gonna climb the roof over here. So one of the things that you wanna try to focus on is like lifting shingles. If you could see that right over here, you can see some lifting shingles on the edge. And then you wanna kinda do a wide scan and look at it from the base level you can see some lifting shingles right here so we know that we're going to need that some roof is taking some basic wind damage and then you want to kind of focus around the boots right here you can start to see some heavy caulking around those areas so that's a real basic look but whenever you see stuff like that you automatically understand that you are going to probably have some maintenance uh, but let's get up there and see what we find First spot, walking on the roof, it looked like you had a little bit of a impact damage and then you have a fastener push through, so potential water leak area. Coming around your rubber or plumbing boots, right here you can see that they have uh, taken some damage in the past, so they've tarred them up and look, there's even a little small hole right here. Tar is a, a temporary fix with these issue, with these things. It's best just to replace them. They're fairly cheap to replace. You can find them at Home Depot, relatively cheap, but a roofing company will charge you about 75 bucks a piece uh, to replace them. Coming to the back of the roof over here, you can see that all the plumbing stacks, um, the rubber boots have been destroyed and they've been patched at one point in time with tar. So it's time to replace those. And coming down to the base, it's always good to inspect around the satellite dish. And you see that, uh, they, the fasteners just need to be resealed. And I always like to kind of put some pressure around the satellite dish to see if the decking has taken any water damage. It doesn't appear so, so it's this roof definitely doesn't need to be replaced or anything like that, but it is time for some maintenance. Those maintenance costs won't be astronomical compared to the price of the property, but it'll probably be around like $1,200. Uh, to come in there and pull back the shingles and replace all those boots. Yes, it doesn't cost that much in supplies or anything like that. Just labor right now is very expensive. So let's do a quick walk around the exterior and then we'll take a look at the major appliances before we head over to the new build inspection. All right, coming up to the side of the property, you see a few things wrong, obviously, but what we really want to focus on is the condenser outside. See the condenser's obviously older, has some fin damage, it's rusty. And then coming around to the data plate, which is kind of hard to read-ish, but uh, it's normally the second two numbers of any serial number. So it's a 2004 three ton unit. And then let's see what type of Freon. And it is an R22 Freon. So it is obviously older. We knew it was R22, but it's always good to double check uh, the type of Freon that's in place. So what does that mean? Well, you do have an older age unit. Uh, John, he's our inspector today, and he was actually saying that the condenser is performing and it is working. So remember your inspector is performance-based inspect an inspector, but it also means that you're gonna have to budget to replace this. I wouldn't rely on the home warranty. Home warranties will not normally replace something this old. They might replace a few parts, but they're not gonna give you a new condenser by any means so uh, this is something that you're definitely going to want to budget put in your budget or even replace moving in because if it makes it another another summer i would be impressed very common find we find out here are these corner pops corner pops aren't foundation related a lot of people see this crack through the slab right here and they panic this crack is actually from the expansion contraction of the concrete and the brick they expand and contract at different rates 
and it shears off the corners to the property. It's like this on most Texas properties, except for that one. <laughs> but most Texas properties are all missing their downspouts though. Okay, coming up into the attic space, checking the water heater. And you can see that we have a newer water heater, which is nice. It is a 2020. So um, I bet this is even newer than 2020, but you never know. Um, probably one of the manufacturer wholesale deals or something like that. But we do have some things wrong with it. Starting at the top, the flue is uh, not properly installed. You're missing your temperature. Uh, it's not showing up. Oh, it's reverse in the camera. <laughs> it's uh, you're missing your temperature and pressure relief valve right here. And then uh, uh, the, the pan isn't even properly connected either. So there's several things wrong with this water heater that they want to bring up to date because of, you know, uh, carbon dioxide. And then also just the safety features if it, it's not installed properly and cause water damage uh, to the structure. Okay, so another really good find. You can, whenever you find this actually, we have newer coils here. And look, these coils are rated for R4, ooh, it's hard to see in the photos, but here, it's rated for R410A. Look at this. And then they have an R22 system outside. You cannot mismatch the coils and the condenser outside. They're not designed to run together. And this will cause the system to ultimately fail. So a uh, really great find for the client. And typically whenever you find something like this, you're able to, um, and I'm having all kinds of issues today, you're a, they're able to negotiate to have the rest of the HVAC system repaired and replaced properly uh, for the deal. So this is a really good find for our clients. Okay, we're headed up to the new build. There's a lot of other things on this property, you know, like, you know, exterior cosmetic issues, interior cosmetic issues. But remember, whenever you're purchasing a property like this, focus on the major components. And that number one being you need cold air. We live in Texas, it's hot and, and it's not properly installed and it will fail. No home warranty will cover anything like that. So you definitely want that fixed uh, moving in by the seller or understand that you are going to have to replace it moving into the property. The second item is the roof. Uh, there is some issues with the roof. It doesn't appear to be fully leaking right now, but we haven't had a lot of rain here lately. We're in kind of a drought in uh, Houston. So I definitely do recommend to replace all those boots on the roof just to help prevent any future damage on the property. The roof doesn't look like it needs to be replaced. I would say it's right at the age limit of what it's supposed to be performing like uh, but that being said you do need some roof maintenance suit so those are the two number one th two things that you definitely want to focus on uh, moving into a structure like this uh, ignore all that other things uh, when it comes to like cosmetic issues that's what I always try to make sure I say about these videos so let's uh, check out these new builds where you can be overly picky and ask for everything all right Okay, I lied. I am headed towards a different job because we went to the north side of town, northwest side of town, above 99, and I was headed to a new build, which I thought ended up being a phase two. Then the phase two ended up being in a different location, then it wasn't ready, and now I am going to do a 2013 build with Mark. So that's part of home inspection sometimes. Um, Every day is different and some days are frustrating and you drive a lot and this is one of them. So we are doing uh, this this uh, build. All, the inspection starts in about 10-15 minutes. Me and Mark will go through and if we find anything interesting, I'm going to make a vlog. I'll make a vlog even if it's not interesting. So uh, follow along, see what I find. Let's go check it out. Okay, starting this inspection. This is typically how we uh, like to set up our kitchen. The water running, oven running, dishwasher, set up our tools. I know I covered this several times before, but this is a typical start. Voiceover time. The homeowner was present during this inspection, so I took a bunch of extra clips of what we typically see in a typical home inspection. We don't always find crazy broken things on every single structure. Most of the time, I'd say 80% of the time, it's kind of boring. 
We open up a lot of the same windows. We turn on all the supplies when we walk into every property. We open up the same plumbing manifolds, looking and seeing mostly not broken items. So it, it's easy to become complacent. But one thing we always do is try to never become complacent because that's when you start missing things. So as you can see, this is a fairly taken well taken care of property and we find a lot of little minor defects in the structure but it doesn't mean that you need to start skipping steps it's very important to document everything you can and follow the same steps even if you don't find anything wrong all right hey guys we're on the roof today in this house uh the roof was kind of looking steep um, it's really, there's no place to get on in the back, so we were able to get on the, the roof here of this valley, uh, which is a great spot. And uh, it's really important that we always get on the roof when we can to look at the roof, uh, because there's things that we can miss with the drone. So over here, <coughs> we have uh, this roof decking that's probably damaged, it's warped, um, and it's depressing inward. Um, Beneath this is the garage, and we also notice that there's water stains on the garage ceiling. So uh, when we get into the attic, we'll definitely take a look at this area and see if this was a, an area that leaked before. And then also here on the roof, we have these uh, little defects here. This is probably from impact damage. So that's a good uh, first spot, even though this property is newer and, um, well, newer, it's still a little older, you know, eight years old, but um you still get up here on the roof and you still never know what you're gonna find so we had an improper box vent or i guess that's probably the dryer vent not properly installed started leaking and uh, caused some damage to the roof so you know that that alone could pay for the inspection repairs like that could be around you know that's around 800 dollars minimum uh to pull back the shingles and since it's a two-story roof some roofing companies will even go up to 1200 dollars uh, to fix something like that so when it comes to looking at impact damage on a roof, um, you also want to look at around the exterior window seals, uh, on the window seals or on the gutters. Typically, homes that get qualified for a replacement with impact damage, you need to see it in other sources, not just the roofs, such as uh, you know the gutter material too as well, or the window seals. And if you're not seeing it there, it's unlikely that they uh, get approved for a new roof through insurance. Here are some quick other little snapshots of things that we look at every day and we have to see these items to make sure that they are installed correctly or common areas that we find problems. Like I said, most of the time that we look in these spots, they're there and the items are working properly, but if it's not, that's how you that's why we stick to the routine and it's easy to catch and easy to document so sticking to the routine makes the items even easier to spot they stick out like a sore thumb because you are used to seeing it installed correctly 80 percent of the time and whenever you look in the area where you always look and it's broken it it's so easy to find so always look in the same spots, stick to the same routines, look for those areas of things installed correctly. And whenever it's not, it's, it's, it just makes it in the report and you move on with your day. If you want to know what our routine looks like, you can go back in my YouTube video, just type in routine in our search history and you're able to see our exact routine. I cover it with my father and I think it is one of our most reviewed. So if you can't find it in the search, just go to the most popular videos and you're able to see it there too as well. Okay, I'm gonna wrap the video up there. As you can see, we still found things. Your inspector will always find something on a property, typically always find something anyways. Uh, I would say the things that we found on this, even though we did find a roof leak and some damaged roofing material, is pretty minor in the big scheme of things. So overall, this one is a good structure. Just time to come in, fix the roof, and move on with the property. Remember, all homes develop problems. It's just a matter of which problems that your home developed, and there's typically a solution for the problem. It just costs money. <laughs> so just, you just wanna budget and see how much 
money you're willing to spend on this property or your future home uh, to keep moving forward. That's Chris with A Action. As you can see, uh, every day is different. And if you liked uh, these videos, please hit that like and subscribe button and catch us on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.